have one of those moments where the stars seem to align. Something you've been waiting for for so long finally comes to fruition. And then once you finally have it, you instantly regret it. Wait, what? This car does have a few good things going for it, which is why I couldn't resist picking it up for $16,500. It is a original 1998 chassis. It has 82,000 miles. It has no sunroof and it already has an LS. For that reason and based on the pictures, I thought that this was gonna be one of the nicest 240SX chassis I have ever seen. And when it showed up, <sighs> these cars are no longer the $5,000 drift missiles that they were back in the day. And the people that own them seem to know it and ask the moon for these cars. I tried to trade our white turbo C5 Corvette for a swapped 240SX any motor swap 240SX and every single owner looked down from their ivory tower and just laughed at me. This car is most of what I wanted, but just walking around it, you kind of get an idea that it still kind of has the same type of look and feel as one of those cars that some kid got a hold of. And this is what we're left with that even though it's a low mileage chassis. The paint is not nearly as good as I was expecting. Even something down to the OEM front bumper here where most of the stuff is held in by zip ties as opposed to actual hardware. These are all kind of things that I thought that I was avoiding by buying this specific chassis. What I can say though is that all of the VINs are in place on the car besides the trunk, if there is supposed to be one here. And there definitely, I believe, was some paintwork here, but you can kind of see that there's a little bit too much blue in the trunk itself. And then this door is also missing a VIN. And the only thing that I noticed is that when you look at the inside of the door to the outside, there's a lot of blue in the inside of that door. Something like the door panel here. I didn't notice this in pictures. It has duct tape on the top of it. Let's take a look underneath and see if maybe there's a different story under here from what the exterior of the car is with its blemishes. You can see this car definitely had a turbo setup of some sort in it at one point, given that this is cut. I didn't actually ask about the history of this car, but obviously it's not stock. So if someone had a different motor in it at some point, that doesn't necessarily surprise me. It does look like all the swap stuff is there. Swap headers, stance coilovers, some heim joints on the steering rack. All right, so that is a little bit interesting that the shifter on it is hitting and it doesn't have a trans mount on it. That is... Very interesting. Okay, a little bit of rust up there, which again was not mentioned to me. And being that somebody has been under this car pretty regularly putting this thing in, I don't know why that wouldn't have been noticed. Surface rust on the tank protector there, which is not a big deal. The one area that I was told about, oh man. Yeah, I don't like that either. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like it all the sounds you just made. Okay. So what I was told about and shown in pictures is that right there. Okay. And 
That that doesn't look so bad to me. That it doesn't really upset me, and I was completely fine with that. The seller did send me that. What they didn't send me is this side. Go ahead, poke your head up there, Carrington. Hmm. It appears somebody may have spray painted over it. Yeah. That's old JDM tricks. Yeah. Well, it's the, you know, giant hole out of the frame right there. Oh, that is oh, what wow. has me concerned. Oh, my God. Did you see look back here? No. Is it? <sighs> Dude. <laughs> oh, my goodness, man. And, like, all of this is stuff that could have been easily shown. So I'll, I'll give you a little bit of hope here, and then I'll say something bad again. I had an R32 GTR that I bought from Salvage Auction. It wasn't wrecked, and it ended up having major rust issues. Something like this, but worse. Uh, mine also had issues on this inner one. Apparently, it's fairly common to take this outer brace off where that's bolting to, and if you put solid bushings in this, it'll still work. You'll be fine. As long as this actual intersection isn't compromised, you should be good. Over here, though, it looks like that is. You shine a light up there? I don't know how solid that is. It looks like stuff was slabbed over and painted. I could be wrong, though. Uh, you can definitely Not as bad. see in the hole there. It's kind of hard to get the lighting yeah. to it. That There's some surface rust, but yeah, it doesn't look nearly as bad. 240 lights? Yeah, I mean, I hate to say it, but if you buy a 240, you got to get ready to do 240 fix. Oh, my goodness. And I, I truly thought that I was avoiding that. And I said it really slow with hopes that you can hear the sincerity in my voice that I thought that I wasn't getting just your average everyday 240. But I've made that mistake before because I thought that I could make 400 horsepower with a stock suspension juke and actually have it go straight. I can make sense of the value pretty much all day long. And ultimately, I've wanted one of these cars for a long, long time. And there's only one way to really do it, and that's just kind of jump in and get one. Because seemingly, they're all the same. They all have the same issues, but this one having plenty of mods on it is where I make sense of the value. We can pull a lot of money back out of it. And at the end of the day, if every single one of these chassis is rusty or has some sort of problem, et cetera, et cetera, one that I can pull a lot of value out of and make sense of is always gonna be a win at the end of the day. But one way or another, I own it. It came with a 5.7, T56 setup from a GTO. It already has a set of wheels on it, even though they're not my particular taste. They do look good on the car. I'm just not into rep wheels. And personally, I feel like the Workmeister, the S1s are just so played out at this point that I just can't wrap my head around keeping them. There's a lot of stuff that we are going to be able to sell to recoup a lot of money to put towards to what we ultimately want to do with this car. This may be one of the only times on this channel that you are gonna see us remove an LS motor in favor of something else. Do what? Yeah, we're taking it out. That's stupid. We have the ZR1 project. The FD, if Carrington would move his dumbass out of the way, is actually making some progress. That has an LSA motor in it. We don't need another LS project right now on the channel. So the question is, what do you do with this chassis? It's not half bad. It's definitely usable. We could do an RB. We could do a 2J. We could do an SR20. We could do a K-series motor. Thank you, Fernando. But all of those things have been done before, time and time again. And, well, we own a shop that has lots of options. The motor that I want to put in this car, I don't even know if it's going to fit yet. Basic hillbilly math says that it will though, because an inline six fits lengthwise and a V8 fits width wise. So that means that a V10 should work. But at this point in the video, I don't even know. There's only one way to find out though. We gotta go pull one out of inventory and get the motor that is in the car out.
Hey, Fernando! That was quick. Well, Fernando, I would make a rise crack about, you know, me being a really great tech or something like that, but <laughs> half the stuff either wasn't hooked up or was held on by zip ties. So. <laughs> oh my God. We still need to leak this motor down to make sure that it is healthy. It came from a reputable, but very unoriginal salvage yard in Arizona. So I'm at least partially confident that it is going to give us some good numbers, but I cannot resist to see if it's actually gonna fit. What do you think, Fernando? Ah, it's gonna be really tight. All right, let's go get it. I don't know, Fernando, what do you think? Blue, um, blue valve covers, red valve covers? That's a good question. I kinda like more the red style, but this one is, this one makes good power too, so. All right, you, you said red first. Let's go with red. All right. Oh, the water pump? Yep. Wow. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, hold on. We're almost there. We're almost there. Ooh, the exhaust manifolds. Super tight. Mm. We might have to take off the manifolds covers real quick. Well, that does work most of the time. I'm not crazy. Oh, see, it loosened it up. Yes. All right, Fernando, we are in business, baby. <laughs> More. A little, little bit of space coming forward now. Look at that. Yeah. Got plenty of room for this. How the frame rails look? Three. So this one is really tight. Right? So I got room over here, though. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> it's gonna fit. <laughs> no way! Okay. So the only other area we're gonna have to watch is the brake booster right there. I don't think it's pretty clear. Okay, we'll come down a little bit more. Keep going. Good. Wow. Way. Look at that. Like this almost clears, like that is nuts. Give ourselves a little bit more light here. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, that's what it's designed for. <laughs> that's awesome i mean it's it's pretty darn close like to where it should be i think it might need to come back a little bit maybe although the other problem 
And this is this is all very, very preliminary, believe me, we know that. Because when you put a trans on it, it's gonna sit, the motor is gonna have to be down further. I'm liking it though. <laughs> I'm liking it. Wow. Hopefully that was uh, just on there for a test fit since it didn't have a gasket. Not a bad start with a seven. A little bit higher on that one than a nine. Both sides of the motor gave us favorable leak down numbers. We have the motor all sealed up like we like to sell them, which is just in the nick of time because as I was pulling the Viper transmission and wire harness out of inventory from previous cars that we dismantled, I realized how little financial sense this project actually makes. So where we had the motor originally, it was touching on this part of the cross member. So you can see we have, call it roughly two inches. And I do think it is a little bit further forward this time, but we can see back here in the trans tunnel, there is a small spot that it is hitting right there. And then also a very small spot that it is hitting right there. But that is very, very minimal for what we have going on. My main area of concern was the top and you can actually see there is plenty of space at the top of it. So if we just kind of tap that section in with the hammer, which normally I don't really like to do, but this is minimal clearance required. My concerns about hammering on the firewall here are completely unfounded because somebody's already done it pretty profusely. So we have our two sections right here, right here that we are gonna go ahead and hammer. And I'll probably go ahead and just chop off those two studs just for good measure. I believe the term the Drift Boys use is massaged. More massaging. Something about doing that on this car doesn't bother me near enough as some of the other cars I've owned. This only happens, all right? Obstacle number two here appears to be clear. That is as high as we can get it into this trans tunnel as it is shaped right now. And that may be able to be changed later. Originally, I did not want to modify this firewall too, too much, but the more I get into this and the more apparent it becomes that this is actually possible, I wanna do whatever I can to get this into the car, which takes us to our next hurdle. And we're gonna to have to get a little bit creative here.
we are literally welding the jack stand onto one of these carts so that way we can get the motor up into the air as high as possible so we can work underneath of it and get the subframe back under it get the oil pan off but we still have some mobility to move it around as needed This is the moment of truth for this project. Fitting the motor and the transmission into the car, it's kind of baby steps. It's good initial test fit, make sure that it's somewhat possible, but getting the subframe under the car here and figuring out if it is going to work with the oil pan to the steering rack to the subframe if we can fab motor mounts for it all of this we knew we were going to have to do but this is the first time that we're going to see basically what we're up against and if it's actually possible into it. Yeah. okay oh shit <laughs> 